Even though the Grand Canyon is one of the most incredible tourist attraction sites, there is something special and mysterious about the Grand Canyon which makes people want to investigate all the mysteries beneath these walls. Several secrets are concealed in the Grand Canyon that continue to intrigue and fascinate people. But in order to unveil all the mysteries hidden behind this natural wonder, we must first go back in time to comprehend its genesis. The Grand Canyon has been associated with a place that evokes religious and spiritual beliefs because back in history, 11 indigenous groups have visited and lived around the area. They do not regard it as a natural wonder or a beautiful park. Their sentiments are strongly imprinted with the place they view, as a portal to the world hereafter, i.e. hell or heaven have a supai. One of the ancient tribes believes that the departed souls must pass through the Grand Canyon in order to reach their final destination. For the tribe, it is much more than just a physical place. It is deeply embedded in their beliefs and values. Just like it takes time to forge a blade, the natural wonders don't arise overnight or every two weeks. The Grand Canyon evolved over five million years to become what it is today. Not a single force was enough to shape the world's most spectacular and marvelous wonder. Erosion shaped the canyon when a natural dam created a lake in northern Arizona, draining the Colorado River and cutting through the rock to shape the canyon. Even though erosion is such a powerful process, it alone didn't sculpt the Grand Canyon. Wind and water forces interacted with erosion to shape the most breathtaking landscape of human history. This explains that humans have no role in the making process of the canyon, but what if there is something more? What if the origin of the Grand Canyon itself is a mystery? The footprints found in White Sands National Park reveal that humans arrived in America 23,000 years ago, almost thousands of years earlier than recorded. Some researchers think that it represents proof of the early ventures of humans in the New World, and this discovery sparked a debate in the archaeological community, indicating that we know nothing about our origin. The footprints in White Sands National Park seem to be a game-changer, as one archaeologist, Ciprain Ardeline, proposes that humans came to America as early as 30,000 years ago. Crazy, right? They came to this conclusion as it was the first concrete proof of human existence in the early history of the New World, as Ciprain called his discovery the holy grail of anthropology and archaeology, as the scientists pursued the history further using the process of thermochronology. A complex approach, the archaeologists, to consider the connection with Rodinia, the landscape split that happened almost 700 million years ago. They believe that the Grand Canyon's geological conditions are due to the fracture of Rodinia, which may have impacted it and caused great unconformity now. Another mystery of the Grand Canyon is the Great Unconformity, which has perplexed geologists for years and is most visible at the bottom of the Grand Canyon where Paleozoic Tampine Sandstone which is 500 million years old, immediately overlays the 1.4 to 1.8 billion year old. But we need not worry about solving this mystery, because the University of Colorado Boulder researchers will solve it for us. According to the study published in the journal Geology, the gaps in geological history are caused by the earthquakes followed by the split of Rodinia, causing the rocks and sediments to wash away in the ocean, resulting in the gaps we see today. Barra Peak said that the Grand Canyon is like a history textbook. It is like a window into the past that is assisting us in solving the mysteries. Hidden in the timeline and with this study published, we are almost one step closer to comprehending the previous events that shaped the world we live in today. While discussing the mysteries concealed inside the Grand Canyon, let's dive into G. Kincaid's investigation of something strange and fascinating. When Kincaid learned about the closing of the Grand Canyon, he decided to make one more trip down the Colorado River. Throughout the journey, he was expecting to find precious minerals like gold, silver, and copper, but instead, what he found in the sediment formation that towered about 2,000 feet was something he had never seen or discovered. It piqued his interest. So he set out to satisfy his curiosity even though there was no single path to follow. While roaming around, 
he discovered hundreds of steps carved into the sandstone going up to the high shelf of the canyon. But what puzzled him the most was that these steps led to the entrance which men clearly made, and that is not all. And what was more incredible was that the concealed entrance was etched with ancient Egypt. Hieroglyphics. Now the question arises, in that part of the canyon, no human existed or resided before, so where did the hieroglyphics originate from? Kincaid was keen to discover the destination of the hidden passage, and why the hieroglyphics were there, so he followed the passage deeper. And what he found perplexed him even more. He found ancient artifacts and intricate carvings hidden deeper inside the Grand Canyon. Kincaid suddenly realized that he had stumbled upon something exceptional, and it didn't end there. In a recent podcast with Joe Rogan, he explained that somebody was already living beneath it long before anybody knew about Grand Canyon. Kincaid found an extensive underground city, where rooms were about 30 to 40 feet in size. But what blew him away was that the walls were 3 feet and 6 inches thick. He encountered something so well built in architecture that he couldn't grasp how it was possible to build intricate patterns. He continued his exploration and discovered seeds, cooking areas, and huge dining halls. The rooms were full of ancient artifacts and copper-made tools, with technology that did not exist at that point in time. Kincaid named his marvelous discovery Citadel and sent the artifacts to Smithsonian, asking for financial and logistic support to continue his exploration. Professor S.A. Jordan and a team of 40 scientists, researchers, and laborers joined Kincaid in excavation and exploration, and they found the cave system. The underground city was not just random sets of rooms and tunnels. It was a whole city designed where people lived for hundreds of years. The reason behind the reason of the existence of those people is quite interesting. Let's take another look at the architecture of the citadel again. As we observed earlier, the crafting was advanced in time. It is possible to assert that the tribe who resided there maybe has been far more sophisticated and intelligent, but that does not seem to be the case. The theories tossed around were quite believable, but the most plausible one was the one where it was suggested that the tribe had either migrated from Egypt or Asia, as shown by the crafting and artifacts. The tools discovered also suggested that the underground city could have been a warrior training facility. The notes and information were passed to the Smithsonian Institute to prove their hypothesis and get the additional manpower to continue their exploration and excavation, but what happened changed the trajectory of this exploration. Their request for a bigger team got rejected, Kincaid and Jordan got frustrated because they could not get additional power. That is not even the craziest part. All of a sudden, both of them disappeared. And their men either got died or disappeared. And those who survived had no recollection of anything related to their exploration. That wasn't the end. The government stepped in and ordered that. No one was allowed to step foot inside the Grand Canyon. It seemed they were trying to hide something, but that was not all. Legends and rumors have a grain of truth as stories of giant skeletons found in the western U.S. While they sound like a fictional novel, some reports suggested the rumors were true. Some Pueblo cultures believe they have their own legends, the outward creatures. Unsurprisingly, the excavation of mounds in America's Midwest found something quite extraordinary, and they were not dissimilar from those found in Europe at that time. They found extraordinary artifacts and skeletons almost seven to eight feet tall, like what happened at the Grand Canyon. The Smithsonian was also called in to examine those findings. But things took a strange turn as some claimed that the skeletons were sent to the Institute to analyze them. While some denied the knowledge about them, it seemed that the shreds of evidence were suppressed. Two, maybe the truth is being suppressed, or maybe it is all a myth. But that is not the end in 1990. The Arizona Gazette proposed a shocking theory that the possibility of Egyptians crossing the Pacific Ocean and making their home inside the Grand Canyon is plausible. And as evidence suggested that the cavern that came from Egypt belonged to the descendants of Ramses. Which site do you land on? Are you a believer or not? Please let us know in the comment section below. And if you like the video, don't forget to press the like button and share it with your friends to debate.
we will see you guys in the next video. Till then, give it your best thought.